Hey guys, I'm here in Georgia visiting my mother-in-law and my mother for Mother's Day. Uh, they both live very close to each other, so it's convenient that we're able to come and see them both at the same time on, our, on one visit. Uh, we're actually going to be even closer to my mother-in-law soon as she's going to be moving down to stay in the cabin we've been living in for the past year and a half as soon as our house is built so that we can take closer care of her. But meanwhile, we're here in her house in Georgia and I am going to try out cooking on a cast iron skillet for one of the very first times that I've ever done this at least in a very long time I know I've used cast iron in the past but I I can't remember it I don't remember what happened other than the fact that everything got stuck to the plate and it might or to the pan and that might be because it wasn't seasoned it was a brand new pan I, I probably had just bought and I was trying to learn how to cook and I thought well this is worthless but I've since found out that you can typically do a lot better with a seasoned pan and this one, according to my mother-in-law, has been seasoned. Now, I'm a little nervous about what she seasoned it with because I see over here on her counter, canola oil. Not only do I not want canola oil, but I certainly don't want soy lecithin or dimethyl silicone for anti-foaming or propellant either. So get rid of this stuff, guys. This is horrible for you. I don't know how many times I have to tell my family the things that you eat are what causing your problem, but you got to be gentle with your family because it seems like the more you push them in one direction, the more they push back. I think it's just human nature. So I know a lot of you are dealing with difficulties out there living with non-carnivores when you're going on a carnivore lifestyle. Just try to be understanding. It's like dealing with people who are still stuck in the matrix. They don't want to accept it. They're not ready for the red pill. Most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. So it is what it is. Anyway, let's give this steak a try. If I'd have brought my tripod, this would be a lot easier. So this might be a little bit weird for one of my normal videos, but I'm gonna do the best I can. So we're gonna start out with this 14 ounce ribeye here, normal size steak. And I'm gonna put some of my Redmond Real Salt that I brought with me. You can see uh, this bottle has been well used. I've worn off most of the label. Here's your, your normal size steak that you might get from the store. Looks like it's about three quarters of an inch thick. So we're gonna cook it on this cast iron skillet and see how we do. You know, one hard thing to do is to use grinding salt when you have one hand on the phone and one hand on the salt. I can't grind the thing. So I'm gonna have to do the grinding separately. So there's the first side done and we'll flip it over and do a little more on the other side. This is smaller than the normal steaks that I use so I'm not using as much salt as I normally use but I will say that a lot of people have noticed I tend to be heavy-handed with the salt anyway so I'm gonna give it a try with a normal amount and see how we do. Even with less than my normal amount you can still see it's pretty well coated with salt. So all right Set it on a medium heat, and I'm going to give it some time to warm up. I'm also going to wipe out some of this oil that's in here. Heaven forbid, that's that canola oil. The only thing I don't like about doing this is I'm using somebody else's stuff. People always talk about how everything is so easy, but there's always little things you got to watch out for, like making sure you're not getting canola oil on your delicious ribeye steak. While I'm waiting on that pan to heat up, you know... I hear all the time how people tell me, oh, I eat only the good stuff. I don't eat a bunch of that garbage and things like that. And I hear that from family members as well. Family members who I find having canola oil on their counter. And then I also see things like this. Yeah, this is real high on the healthy meter right here. And you can't tell me you weren't having some donuts. This is an open package. <laughs> My reason for pointing this out is I get a lot of people that leave comments that say they're doing everything they're supposed to be doing but they're having problems for this, that, or the other reason, or they don't know what the reason is. And ultimately, it comes down to the fact that we let stuff sneak into our diet that we shouldn't eat. Because I think there's just this human tendency, this natural tendency to do things we know we're not supposed to do, even though they're harmful for, for us. Um, not to mention, addiction causes us to do crazy things. When you're addicted to sugar, you're going to seek out sugar. And if you're not trying to really break free from that addiction, you're not going to free yourself from that addiction. Just like a heroin addict is not going to break free having a little heroin every once in a while. 
You gotta cut out the sugar completely if you really wanna give this diet a chance. You gotta get rid of all the seed oils and all the sugar and all the processed garbage that you have in your house if you really wanna make a good go at lion diet or any type of carnivore diet where you're gonna really try to get back to eating the things that our bodies were made to eat. All right, I'm gonna turn this heat down just a little bit because I don't wanna burn this steak. I have not cooked like this in years and years. thing I don't have is a temperature probe, so I'm just going to have to eyeball this. I will say the pan didn't get as messed up as I thought it would. A lot of times it's like that's part of the problem is being able to clean the pan, but it looks like we're going to have easy work of that. Let's cut into this steak and see how we did. I'm going to give it a couple of minutes to rest first. So while we're taking a moment to let this steak rest, let me wish all of you mothers out there a happy Mother's Day as well. You know, Mother's Day is a very important day. I think it should be for everybody because one, everybody's got a mother and two, you're lucky to be alive if you have a mother that put up with you this long. So be sure to wish your mother a happy Mother's Day tomorrow. And I hope all of you mothers out there have an absolutely wonderful Mother's Day. God bless. All right, let's cut into this steak now. All right, doing the best I got with what I got on hand, just setting my phone on the tabletop here. And unfortunately, I did cook it a little more than I would like to. But that's the reason I love cooking with my air fryer. I love when I'm cooking at home because I have full control over the temperature because I have temperature probes, I have the meter plus, I have a Dreo chef maker that has everything that it takes to measure the temperature. It makes it so much easier when you can cook your food properly. But let's see how this came out anyway. Mm. I certainly have no complaints. It's a delicious piece of meat. I think it would be better to try cooking on a cast iron skillet like this with something a little thicker that will allow it to sear better on the outside and not cook so quickly on the inside. But perhaps I wasn't using the right temperature. I haven't done this in a long time. I just wanted to share with you my first attempt in years to try cooking on a cast iron skillet just to let you know when you're not in your normal area of expertise you can still wing it and make something that is on the carnivore way of eating that isn't going to be harmful for you to eat and you don't have to go hungry well that's all i've got for this one guys just wanted to pop in and say hi for mother's day and share this short little bit with you using a cast iron skillet for the first time and give me some time. I'm going to try to get better at using the cast iron, and I'll share that with you as we move on. I'll see you next time. Well, it didn't come out as bad as I first thought. Got a nice medium going here, maybe even medium rare in some parts. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat? Real quick, I want to share one more thing I always take with me when I'm traveling. My good old travel buddy, Carnivore Crisps. I bring several of my favorites because you never know when you're going to be stuck in a situation where you need something to eat and you don't have anything else nearby. Carnivore Crisps. Check it out at carnivorecrisps.com. <laughs>